Welcome back, Five Aces. Establishing battlefield control. Stand by. Hey, hey, people, Five Aces here. Are you tired of the lush green scenery of Open Arrays uh, Red Alert mod? Are you tired of happiness and joy and overall and joyfulness? Then, boy, do I have the remedy for you. We are in Shadow Paradise. Everything is brown, everything is gray, everything is apocalyptic. Post apocalyptic, in fact. So, it's basically just 2035 waiting to happen. Welcome back to Shadow Paradise, Commanders. This is uh, has been a long time in the making. I got some replays sent by Mr. ZX Ganon, who is basically a head of balancing slash developer. He has taken on multiple roles, he's wearing multiple hats. Uh, <laughs> not to say the ass hat, no. <laughs> I'm sorry. That was uh, kind of too easy. No. He's a, an overall slightly controversial figure, but definitely some who, someone who is putting a lot of energy uh, and time investment into the development of this game alongside Nolt, who is the original creator. And we got ourselves a match between these two players, not Nolt, mind you. It is Mr. Sedix Ganon as Cabal facing off against Kato as the GDI forces who are reclaiming their first reclaimer here. First Reclaimer life taken. Is it a life? It's an unlife, I guess. Cabal just uh, assembling everything or assimilating everything into its forces. It's a bit, uh, giving a bit of Star Trek, uh, what's it? Uh, uh, Starship Troopers vibes. And those floaty Reclaimers. For those of you who are uh, not in the know, so let's introduce Shadow Paradise once more because this has been, it's been a long time since I've covered this mod on this channel. It's a mod that features five factions. Um, GDI, Nod, Cabal, the Forgotten, my absolute favorite faction, and the Skrin. So basically, um, all the Tiberians, uh, Tiberian, uh, Tiberian Wrath uh, factions, and it has tons of custom graphics, tons of custom game mechanics, such as uh, the graphics, such as the Tiberium Extractor, which has just been claimed by ZX Ganon. Looks really cool with the vats here. Just extracting some liquid Tiberium from the ground. Goes to show how far the Tiberium infection has gone. Cabal harvesters always look so funny to me. It's like mechanical... What's it? Like werewolves? Uh, I guess mechanical hyenas maybe? Yeah. And GDI is very conventional in its design. Also the visual design has not been overhauled all that much. For example the GDI War Factory is still the original model. The power plant is original barracks are the original model construction yard so probably the most of a little faction in terms of what remains of the game design but there is a lot more things that we're going to be talking about uh are those sandbags no fuel tower causes huge explosions when destroyed cool new asset here this is a very old asset by the way okay the first push oh with a titan i completely missed that the titan got overhauled it's got a really cool visual upgrade here oh the drone pit is gonna bomb it away, scare it away. We've got our first scuffle here and we're seeing the first game mechanic of the reclaimers who, yes, they do reclaim lives in that if they kill an infantry, they turned into a worker unit. Those worker units inexplicably get guns. Doesn't matter what they were in their former life, they just get a cabal pea shooter. If they're a marine, that's definitely a downgrade. Here are the missile cyborgs. Here is also the cyborg uh, centurion. Oh, didn't it used to be called the reaper? I'm not sure. No, reapers are the mechanical spiders. Speaking of mechanical spiders, here is a huge mechanical spider moving out in the form of the construction yard. Alrighty, Kato is broke. He's on zero cash, but he's on five harvesters. Now on four. Now six, never mind. He's already established his expansion. And more Titans being added. Those Titan models got upgraded. And they definitely look cooler. As well as the GDI MCV. That is not the original graphic. It is way bulkier. It got uh, upsized, I think, to 2K resolution. And, and also to being a very chunky boy now. It's a treaded vehicle, definitely. One hell of a treaded vehicle. So the third expansion already being claimed by Kato. And the meta... I feel in Shadow Paradise is that you go for one MCV only. It used to cost 5k. I'm not sure if that's still the case, but probably. Okay, 
Titans finishing off one Scouting Reclaimer. Two of the Derricks being held by ZX Ganon, so he definitely has an Econ advantage here. And he's establishing himself to the middle. So this is going to be a very contested hotspot. The Machine Shop here is a tech building that gives you a global repairs for vehicles, which is very useful. Vehicles are infinitely more useful than, uh, than infantry. Infantry, obviously, you know, they are expendable. There's only Marines. So a very, this is a very classic composition. This, this feels like original Tiberian Sun. Tiberian Sun, it used to be the case that people would just go for straight up Marines and Titans. No. Grenadiers were sometimes mixed in because you could do some force fire shenanigans. On Cabal's side, we're seeing a lot more diversity. Ironically, the Cyborg faction being the more diverse. We're seeing Cyborg infantry, just bulky. A uh, little run by from the Cyborg Reapers, but they don't find any connections just yet. Oh! Finishing off his own Reaper, just not such as not to feed experience over. I guess. That's smart. Reapers are very cool, they're hit and run units with very high burst damage against vehicles, also very high range, anti-air to boot, but extremely vulnerable. And they can fire on the move, so they're really good at kiting, and they look hideous. Obviously the model is lifted from uh, from the original, and they were called Cyborg Reapers there as well, as far as I can remember. All right. So we got ourselves a little push out, Titans and Marines. Nothing else added just yet. Nothing fancy in the way of tech, so he's just splitting his armies and gobbling up the map for the time being. Ganon is on a supercomputer already, so he's on tier two. And he's got the Eye of Cabal, which in my, uh, to my knowledge is kind of a, like a gap generator. So it just obscures the vision. Oh, there's an abductor here as well. Those are like lurkers from StarCraft, if you know how they work. Medics now being mixed in. I, that's a tiered zero unit though, so that doesn't count. There's no tech yet. Oh, there's the first disc thrower. I don't know if the elevation is already function mechanics are already functioning properly in the Tiberian Sun mod, which this is based upon. But elevation mechanics definitely do play a role in how the disc bounces used to be the case in the original anyway. There is a lot of medics here being added to the bulk. Okay, cool stuff. Oh, we're seeing the Cyborg Commando. I mean, C is a generous term. It is uh, just visible by the icon. The little skull icon here. Cool stuff. And also some Minotaurs being added. The Minotaurs, as far as I'm aware, have those double lasers still. Abductors being uh, being pulled as well. Abductors, just like lurkers, are really vulnerable and don't do anything when they're unburrowed. But if you bring them into position, they're really strong siege units, uh, really strong zone denial tools as well. And then we've got the gladiators, who are very bulky, very tanky, and pretty, I'd say, decent against everything to a moderate degree. We're hearing some. It's an orca. Oh yeah, that was an Orca run. Oh, also I didn't notice, but there is, there is stat lines here. This is so cool. You can see the stat lines. Armor, aircraft, vision six, uh, movement speed 210. This is so useful, 150 HP, 40 damage, um, 35, I guess that's the turn speed, and then five range and 6.5, no, 6.5 flight speed. Um, not entirely certain what those uh, bottom statistics mean. The abductor, oh, 110 damage. How about you? 160 on the Reaper, ooh. Missile Cyborg, 30. Gladiator, 200 base damage. That is a uh, very solid Minotaur as well. 15 on the Centurion, but it does have uh, rapid fire. Okay, the abductors being already uh, put into siege mode. He's force firing here. This is so smart. So you can get some power plants down. And this army is going to get obliterated here. It's also getting rooted and netted. Wait, 
Do the abductors do something different now? Because I don't see them do much damage here. Ah, if they do, it's just not that much. And the army from Kato is going to be able to stand up to this. So nothing much has been lost, I feel. Uh, orcas are trying to find their way in, trying to angle it. Here's the radar sweep as well. Just to find the abductors, but there are no more. The Cyber Commando is still alive. And uh, good kiting with the nets. Cyber Reapers do have their nets. And this first Cyber Commando oh, appears to be dead to rights. Okay, so really good pushback from Kato. Really good hold. Okay, you can now kill. Okay, those explosions are just visual. I thought this would mean that all the infantry would perish in a flaming inferno, but apparently, nope. Not the case. Alrighty, the Reapers are trying to find an angle yet again. I mean, they're very good against the Titans, and especially against the Orcas. They are crazy good at Antire. Hit and run, mobile, really good uh, vision, really good range. Man! The Titans have gotten their visual upgrade with the barrels. Those barrels, they look like those units don't fuck around. Damn, son. Those are some massive barrels. Looks like they've got the railgun upgrade by default. As far as I'm aware, there are no global upgrades in this game. What's their base damage? 120? No, 105. Marines? 48, solid. Reclaimers? 63? Okay, I think the Asset Lead right now... Oops. Asset Lead is definitely with Kata. Army Lead as well. Here's the Basilisk. So some Siege AoE ships. I feel feels like Ganon just wants to get some uh, AoE damage out against this crazy army. Because there is so much value gained in just AoE damaging this blob. And taking out the medics. Mammoth tanks being added as well. They also have got a new model. The drone pit is quite useful. Oh, here's the AoE. Let's see. Damn, the AoE is actually really good. Basilisks are doing a number on the Titan front lines. Whoa! And here goes the infantry. Oh my goodness, the Basilisks. They are slaughtering the infantry blob. There is nothing left here. It is only armor remaining, but the armor is still standing strong. And, uh... As it stands, quite literally, the Basilisk are gonna have a hard time punching through with armor. They appear to be more more in the vein of um, zone denial against infantry. That they're doing a very good job at. One abductor. Ah, force firing, trying to get the, the grenadiers. Get the disc throws thrown off the loop. Really good. Harvesting operations here. Oh, a blast of turret as well. Tier 2 base defense. Really good uh, base defense from Ganon. But let's check the army graph. He's now ahead. Okay. That was quite the turnaround. What about the combat? Fairly even. Ooh, we've got... Are those wasps? Yes. They also got a visual upgrade. They are now hovering with... I don't know what that is. That, that propulsion. I have no idea. They're just blowing inverse smoke rings straight into the air. Maybe it's magnetic levitation that is being symbolized here. I love the shadows. Love the models here as well. Creepy Crawly Cabal MCV is moving forward and claiming what appears to be a fifth base. He's trying to contest where Kato is. Kato has a very distinct lack of helipads, I feel. Oh, there's only two. He's got tier two unlocked as well now. The tech center is there. This base is not well defended. There is two, RP nah, three RPG towers, a Vulcan tower, very vulnerable to air raids and uh, vulnerable to infantry pushes as well. And this here is just guarded by one single Vulcan tower. So if Ganon scouts this properly, ooh, wasps against the Orcus, like, Try that matchup in real life, right? Am I right? Oh, the Cabal construction vehicle got found out. It got sniffed out. There is going to be a huge engagement here. Oh, the abductors can gain so much value here. I hope Ganon has a... Um, I hope... Kato has a scanner suite. Ganon's a 
conductors, otherwise they're just gonna have a field play here. I don't know if anything here has detection. I'm not quite sure. Alright. So, the abductors, it appears, are not very good against vehicles, which is to be expected, because they're shooting earth spikes, I guess. Oh yeah, the orcas are detectors. That makes so much sense. Here's a railgun turret. Oh, wait! Okay, close. Close. The railgun turret actually deterred the orcas, and that in turn would have, I think, shut down the detection. Okay. He's pushing on through, there is still two mammoths. And I think now it's uh, go time. Mammoths are starting to unload onto the construction vehicle. Oh, he's selling it off. Ganon isn't even bothering. <laughs> Look at those workers. Look at them go. Taking on a mammoth tank. Just with their bare knuckles and a little pea shooter. Very solid. Okay. Now we've got some wasps. That is an interesting transition from Ganon. He's also got the Cyborg Commando unlocked. He's back with the Vengeance. Let's see how he fares against the Mammoth Tanks. Whoa, that is some serious DPS. Jeez Louise. Okay, I was underestimating this unit. 300 base. Uh, this is gonna obliterate the Conyard. What? Do not appear to have anti-air, so that's pretty problematic. But they're fighting underneath the missile cyborg, so it's underneath the missile cyborgs. Oh my goodness! And the shot to the back of the head from the cyborg commando, finishing off everything. My goodness, this commando is still going. Are you kidding me? It is gonna die eventually, but that has been a hero's death. Taking out an MCV all by himself. Uh, one thing I've got a note though is uh, that the refinery stands strong. That means that Kato is still mining, he's still got his operations. So let's check the econ tab. Eight and nine harvesters respectively, so fairly even. Ganon does still have a, a Tiberium essence extractor, so yeah, they're even. Even Stevens. And with that out of the way, I feel like Kato is. Uh, Kind of starting to push, kind of getting some resurgence here on the map. The supercomputer is not in a danger, uh, not in a critically endangered spot yet. There's a blaster turret. There is no anti-air here. There's just a missile cyber coming in now, so that minus one harvester. No. Ganon holding on to his harvester for now. Orcas not having the enough DPS in the tank to finish the job. The basilisk. Okay, trades an orca. No, the orca gets away. Pretty solid. Well played here. I love how the wasps, I feel like they've got a shotgun uh, reload sound. I swear this sounds like a shotgun. So many mammal tanks out. I'm counting seven right now and there is more to be added. We're also having our first phalanx troopers out. Which are, I guess, just the regular missile uh, missile soldiers, but he didn't feel like he had to rely on them before. MCV's moving out yet again. There's... Oh cool, there's camo stripes. Looks like a crocodile here. Oh, the AOE from the Basilisk can do a number. Oh, wasps have been found out. Wait, they do have anti-air. Just didn't utilize it earlier. Pew, 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 go the shotgun wasps. Uh, I don't know if you can take on a mammal tank. Oh, the Cyber Commando can. He is backer than ever. He's now reduced to a crawling state. Oh my goodness, that looks so funny with the arms flailing. Ah! But he's doing a number while kiting. Ah, uh, gets taken out eventually. Really, really good game thus far. Kato's floating hard. What are they building? He's building mammal tanks, orcas. Is that a disruptor I saw? Nope, just more helipads. Oh, and wolverines now as well. This one is highly vetted. Wolverines have also gotten a massive upgrade and overhaul to their base model. Light armor still, but they are very good. Oh, there are upgrades! My goodness, global upgrades increases the damage of falling assets by 50%. 
Whoa! 50 freaking percent. We've also got some upgrades here. Cybernetic legs. Uh, increases the speed and regenerative materials. Oh my goodness. Regeneration on those units is just lethal. What do we have here? Ceramic plating. So it's just uh, armor upgrades. And here we've got the railgun barrels. Oh, that's why the, the guns look so bulky. That makes complete sense. Ganon being pushed out of his expansion lines. He's down to two bases, I feel. It's not looking good for him. He's trying to find some connection with the wasps here. Oh, that is a truckload of missile cyborgs. Takes out the gun here. But he's gonna trade it for his main base. He's gonna get raided here. Regenerative materials have not been researched, but that would definitely not have been the best investment. Kato is pushing Ganon uh, back into his own main base. He's pushing hard. Kato push doesn't appear to be uh, nearly as lethal. Fleet of Orcus is also waiting to connect, but that, that is definitely the wrong conversation. Speaking of wrong conversation, though, I feel like this is extremely vulnerable to just a couple of marines. Yeah. Kato, all he needs to do is spam out a couple of marines. Move forward, take out the missile cyborgs. Crashes left and right. That is definitely an action packed game. Okay, Ganon is going for the harvesters. Good eco raids here. Takes out one more. And fighting over the missile, uh, missile cyborgs once more. Helldiver drop as well. GG is being called. My goodness, Kato taking a point off Ganon, and I've got to commend Ganon here. He was the one who sent in the replay. So sending in replays of yourself losing, that's not not always, not always the uh, most. Uh, it is a noble thing to do. Very sportsmanlike. So awesome game here. Uh, we'll be back with more Shadow Paradise because Ganon sent me some replays. Thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed this uh, detour outside of RAGL and I'll see you next time. Five aces, out. Battle Control Offline.